we're going to hear the testimonies of what God has done in the life. So we're going to begin with Rob Young. Rob has been coming to our church January uh, of this year. Um, half the congregation here this morning is friends with, with Rob because he's brought them all and they're all visitors here. But it's good to have all you guys here. I'm uh, just kidding on that one. Um, but we've just known Rob for less than a year, but God has done a work in his life. And I want you to hear the testimony that, that God has brought. Rob, come on up and I'll, it's going to be an interview time today. So we'll be asking questions and he'll be answering, okay? Hi, Rob. Hi, Pastor Will. <laughs> Okay, tell me a little bit about where you come from. Where were you born, and what your life was like before Christ? Um, before Christ, I was born in Illinois. Uh, my parents were immigrants, um, and my family was struggling when I was born, and so I was sent back to the Philippines with my mom and my sister, and my dad was supposed to um, start a new life and try to get stable for us to come back. Uh, while we were in the Philippines, my mom uh, got a phone call from a friend of hers, and she asked, when did you get divorced? And she says, well, I didn't get divorced. And she said, well, you're, well Peter, my dad, is, is getting married this weekend. Um, so that was the news that my mom got while we were wow. in the Philippines. Um, and so my very first memory, the very first memory I have, is <clears throat> my mom abandoning me in the Philippines with my grandparents and left to come back and get divorced from my, from my dad. Um, so I stayed there for five years. Um, and then I was reintroduced to my mother. Um, I was raised by my Chinese grandparents um, and I got reintroduced to my mother and she didn't understand a word I said because I spoke Chinese and she was Filipino. Um, and you're in Philippines right now. I was in the Philippines. So your mom comes back to... No, I went to... I came here. Cal okay. Yeah, she came, She was here. She set up her life and, and got everything ready. Okay. Um, and so I was reintroduced to my mother. The first year was pretty tough because I had to figure out what language to speak with her and what words were Chinese and what words were English and all this other stuff. Um, and through that, um, my mom uh, had a lot of stress in her life. Um, you know, she was a single mother trying to raise two kids. Uh, she was very abusive. Um, me and my sister would fight over watching Dukes of Hazard or Little House on the Prairie, and my mom would get mad and pretty much beat us for, for arguing about what TV show to watch. Um, so there was a lot of stuff like that that would happen. I would, uh, growing up, I was raised Catholic, um, and I would stay out late, and my mom would get mad. And I knew what was waiting for me, and and I would pray to God, and 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 ask Him to, to to not let me get beat. And and you know God never answered that prayer. Um, so I had a lot of animosity towards God, um, because I was always told He would protect me, and that's what I believed, and it never came true. Um, and so. That, that's what started everything in my life was this animosity in my heart, this pain in my heart. And it led me down very sinful ways. Uh, you know, I was a criminal. I was a drug addict. Um, I was always looking for father figures in my life. Um, and never, you know, after I had that animosity in my heart towards God, I, he never came back to me. I never understood um, until I was older, um, and, and, and I was really confused, and I knew that I needed to cut out all these bad people in my life because I knew I had more love in my heart than the people that I was surrounded by um, because I s kept surrounding myself with people that made me feel good but didn't really understand love, and I started really understanding love. And so being confused teenager, you know, all I knew is that the more I went forward with love, I couldn't do wrong. I couldn't get in trouble. I couldn't be around bad people as long as I loved. And, and, and that pretty much is what started me rolling and, and, and understanding. And through this time is when I met my wife, um, Monica, 27 years ago. 
and um, so you know there was this time that she had a 10 o'clock curfew and I didn't have a curfew since I was in fourth grade um, and so I didn't understand when she was like I have to get home and I said well what's gonna happen and she says well my dad's not gonna talk to me for three days and and you know I understood punishment was I was gonna get beat you know here's my wife saying that she has to get home because of the love of her father so it, it just it that thing about love just you know got stamped even harder that 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 that's the way we should live is with love and respect for that um, so when you were growing up when you were elementary age high school age beatings were a regular daily weekly thing happening to you all the time all the time all the time it's a very interesting concept that I think we need to deal with as far as the church is concerned because there were sincere prayers going up to God please protect me please help me and to a child who makes that prayer to an almighty God who can change that like that correct and yet chooses not to that's the difficulty that you're dealing with because God is supposed to protect me, and yet God did not. And yet God, in his providence, was protecting Rob, as you'll hear the story, what transpires, and how he brings Rob to himself. But that, that's, a, that's a difficulty, and I, I want to share that with everyone, because every single one of us that are out here have different stories. We have different backgrounds. We have different struggles. And in many of those struggles and in those situations, we're hurt because of that. But it's through that pain and through that sorrow that God is drawing us to himself. Um, so your high school, um, you are still in, were you in California at this time? No, Illinois. Illinois. So you're in Illinois. You're going through high school. Did you finish high school? No. You didn't finish high school. Okay, children, let me just say a few things about high school. <laughs> You don't really have to go to it. I'm just kidding, all right? I'm just kidding. But um, in God's plan for Rob's life, uh, life was going to be in a different direction, in a different situation. Um, but his involved some real painful uh, circumstance. So you're, you're now involved with criminal activity. You're now involved with drugs and all of that stuff. Um, what's, what's the relationship with your mom like? Um, I don't have a relationship with my mom. It started falling apart soon after Monica and I got married. Um, things started getting a little wacky with her and I really didn't understand. Um, and then things got even worse when we got pregnant and made the announcement that we got pregnant. Um, at the same time, during this time, my sister was going through a, through a divorce um, and I supported the husband because the husband was the kindest, most loving guy I've ever met in my life. Um, and I kind of know the pain he was going through with my sister, and so I supported him. Um, so this pretty much destroyed my relationship with my mother completely. Um, and she was screaming and yelling about how he was the devil. Um, and it was something that I couldn't, you know, we couldn't come to, to grips with. Um, and at that time, at that point, when my mom flew off the handle, and from my history with her, I knew that I could never leave my children alone with her. So, this is how many years ago? Seven, eight years ago. Seven, eight years ago. Okay. So, you're in a turmoil, a vortex of all kinds of problems and anguish and pain. How does God bring you to himself? Well, there's a story. Um, I guess the most important part to start is that I'm from Illinois. Um, and when I was a kid, you know, I always wanted to learn how to shoot guns. And I had an opportunity to teach rifle shooting at a scout camp in Illinois, or in Michigan, actually. Um, and so I became an NRA instructor because I was like, this is an opportunity I never had. I'd love to give this opportunity to the other kids, and, and I've been put in this place that I could give this opportunity. Well, I was politically ignorant at the time, 
and didn't know anything about it, didn't know anything about politics. And I had a friend um, of 12 or 13 years approach me and said, hey, we got to talk. And he says, and I'm like, well, what do we have to talk about? And you know, it's like one of these serious things that he's gonna give me some life advice that I didn't realize what I was doing wrong. Um, and he said that, you know, that I should worry about the friends that I'm surrounding myself with. And I kept prodding him and I didn't understand what he was talking about because I was at his house helping him fix his computers as a friend. Um, and I said, well, what are you talking about? I gotta be careful of the friends I'm associating with. And it took a while to drag it out of him and finally he said it was people with guns. And the, the person I was hanging out with was the cutest little country gentleman you've ever met. He was like five foot three, had arthritic hands, and he had the cutest little wife that only stood five foot tall. They were the cutest little country couple in the world, and here he was criticizing them and saying there's something wrong with them, and I didn't really put together that it was politics. Um, through our discussion, he ended up, I kept trying to get an explanation, and and I because I didn't understand the politics. I was ignorant, but I wanted an explanation. And he got frustrated, and he called me dark. And I was like, well, what <laughs> what do you mean I'm dark? Now you got to explain what do you mean by that I'm dark. <laughs> and... Uh, and he just kept getting frustrated and he wouldn't explain himself. And he was somebody that I knew went to Catholic Church every Sunday. Um, and the things I could remember in my head is like, well, there's a lot of things in the Bible that talk about dark. And on Facebook, what I started doing to spite him is I started pulling up Bible phrases uh, with the word dark in there. And, and I put, uh, my profile picture was the, from the movie The Dark Man and <laughs> So, really good response there. <laughs> <You're doing well. laughs> and so every Bible verse I could find that said dark, you know, I'd, I'd put that on my, my status. And, and one day, I mean, one day the, the words <laughs> lifted up off the page and I was overcome with peace. And it was incredible. And I had so much comfort and so much peace. And all that, all this burden that I've carried through my life was just relieved. It was just uplifted and 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 taken away from me. So you're um, reading you're reading the Bible, basically to spite somebody else. But you're reading the Bible, right? And God comes and it takes that word, and applies it into your life. It, it went right in my heart, and all my burdens just just lifted. Wow. It, Amen. It was incredible. When I when I heard this. Um, and he was telling me this for the first time. Um, the thing that came to my heart is, what about me? I mean, I didn't get that, you know, because I grew up in a Christian home. I knew about all of that stuff. And so the desire for the same type of monumental experience, you know, God gives to him. And, and I walk away and say, this is not me. So baptism month, when I'm talking to all these people about what's going on in their lives, you're sitting there going, can I have just a little bit of that, you know? But it's God working in a life. He saved me according to his plan in my life, and he saved Rob according to his plan in his life, which is really a phenomenal thing. So then what happened after that took place? Um, then I just started doing more Bible study, and, and, and just the more I dug, the more these things that, that caused anguish in my life were explained. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's just if, if, if these things were in my life before, if I knew the Bible and what it really meant, then the, a lot of the things that I went through in life would have been, would have been easy and, and I wouldn't have had so much pain. I wouldn't have carried so much pain. Um, I know that the more pain I carried without forgiveness, without knowing that I could be forgiven for my sins, that, that just turned my heart black, and it just collected and collected and collected. Um, and so knowing that those sins have been forgiven just directed me in a more righteous way Amen. And, and, and just strengthened that, you know, the love of God and what love is in life, you know, and, and so... It, it, it's just the, uh, the perfect framework. I mean, it's the perfect, it's the perfect book. 
And the scripture says that God is love. And God is the one who changes hearts. Amen. Amen. So you're in a process and a journey and you're growing and you're learning who God is in your life. And God has brought you here to hope. Um, and we're so thankful that God has brought you to him so that we can enjoy the relationship that we have. Um, I, I want to say as your friend and, and, and brother, I, I am sorry for the pain that was part of your life as a, a child. But I've told you this privately and I tell you this in publicly. That, that was God's way of tenderizing your heart because one of the characteristics that you have is that you have a tender heart for people and for God. Don't ever lose that. Don't ever let that go away. That's God's gift to you. Keep that tender heart for him. And uh, we're thankful that God has done his work in your heart and that you, that Jesus Christ is your Savior and you're walking with him today. Amen, brother. Thank you. You can go ahead.